welcome everyone to today's event, which is uh, relating to Unlocking Japan, uh, the keys to international expansion. So um, in a second, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Kawatani Takashi, who's going to uh, talk to us in detail about some of the things that you might want to consider when you're expanding into the Japanese market, uh, coming from a whole variety of different angles. Uh, just before I pass over to Kawatani. Um, I would just like to mention HR Connect and what we do here. So we are a community that helps HR leaders solve their challenges in relation to global expansion and also um, a number of uh, challenges relating to the wider HR agenda. So we have a number of events coming up relating to global expansion topics uh, and a number of other areas across the HR agenda. So if this is something you're interested in, please do drop us an email and um, we'd be sure to include you uh, in our invites for the up and coming events. So, um, Kawatani, I'd love to pass this over to you. I know you have some interesting insights to share with everyone mm -hmm. in relation to things that people need to consider when when they're considering a move or expansion into the into the Japanese market. So I'll hand it over to you. OK, uh, good evening or good morning, everyone, and welcome to this special event, HR Connect, and it is my great pleasure to be part of this group. And I hope my little piece will be of some uh, help as you try to figure out your strategies and tactics tactics to work with the Japanese people, right? And my name is Kawatani Takashi. I'm doing this company for over 30 years, a company called Diversity Management Institute. And I think this company is the first Japanese company carrying carrying the title, the name diversity, uh, even before this word became popular years back. And um, I've been helping Japanese expatriate people in particular, uh, helping them to become better leaders, as well as non-Japanese people uh, working in the Japanese companies who are trying to work with the Japanese people about how to shine in Japanese corporate culture and how to make their uh, wishes come true <laughs> to, 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 to learn in a Japanese company, to sell their products and build a better relationship. Okay, now why are we doing this, uh, taking up this particular country called Japan? Because as you might have read, uh, this is a long time bestseller titled the the world civilizations and in twenty first century something like that <laughs> by uh, Samuel Huntington, former uh, professor at the Stanford University. He wrote a book about that, and he <clears throat> chose Japan as as the one country, one civilization country of the world. And later, I'll show you show you the here's a map from that book. And uh, but anyway, Japan needs more airtime. The Japanese business people need more or more, more airtime. A lot of good good intentions, their uh, warm heart inside is uh, not has is not communicated very well as, as it is intended. So my job comes in there to help speak for themselves, to give you better ideas uh, so that you can uh, feel Japanese business partners as real human beings, somebody with with the good intentions, uh, the similar intentions as, as yours. Okay, can I can we go into the video? I mean, uh, PowerPoint, uh, university textbooks about global leadership, and some English phrases for expatriates and so on and so forth. Okay, some of the clients: Ministry of Education, Foreign Ministry, Japan and Malaysia. U.S. Navy, Yokosuka, <laughs> and some of the clients here. Okay, now today, let's look at Japan from three uh, ways, in three ways. Uh, first, about Japan's way of work, Japan's way of work, uh, some of the uh, socio-cultural contexts that explain the way Japanese people do their business and relate to one another. Japanese way of work, way of relationship building, which in many cases is in sharp contrast to, to that of uh, to those of uh, outside Japan. And the uh, next topic is about Japanese company, organizational makeup 
how the organization is built and how people in that organization behave uh, to get their job done. And lastly, if time permits, working with Japanese, uh, kind of a summary, uh, practical uh, principles, so to speak, of, uh, of working with the Japanese people. Well, today, as I said earlier, it's not going to be a practical export-import, uh, how to set up a company's kind of a concrete uh, information in Japan, but rather give you the valuable information which is not available in seminars and books. So, and it, so main main focus will be about social cultural aspects of uh, doing business in Japan. Something that is that is behind the way they do business. Okay, the uh, Japanese way of work. All right. Before we go in, this is a slide I mentioned a, a, a while ago. Japan is one country, one civilization. From the book, the clash of civilizations and the remaking of world world order. As you see. Let's say uh, Islamic countries span over uh, twenty countries. The Christian Western company uh, countries also span over several countries, many countries, whereas Chinese uh, culture also span into several countries. Where Japan is green, one country, one civilization, meaning there are some things that that is worth uh, exploration. All right, <clears throat> Japanese way of work. Uh, I'm going to show you some slides and pictures and later video clips. Now, my first slide, this is a question for intercultural test to test your cultural sensitivity. Has anyone ever stayed in this hotel called Imperial Hotel? Okay, this is a uh, uh, 125th anniversary magazine uh, advertisement. And one day, uh, a guest uh, spotted this girl bowing to the door that is already closed. The service staff has completed her job, whether it be cleaning the house or bringing the room service food, but that job is already done. She has done appreciation or maybe apologized in the room, but after the door is closed, she is still bowing to this door. So my question to you, and uh, just hazard your guess, why is she doing this, first of all? Why is she doing this after the service is done? Can anyone try your guess, please? Uh, is it to do with something to do with respect? Ah, respect, but the uh, door is closed. No one is watching her. Why does she have to show her respect <laughs> to the door that is closed? What's going on in her mind then with, 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 regards, to res, with regards to respect? How about Miss Emma? Um, oh, is it about her? Is about herself, her work? Oh, oh. so she feels some need to show more respect, maybe. Mm. Her own decision, her own. It is to do with, um, like, obviously, she's finished her job, everything's completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The final, mm. the final thing is final. is it is it being grateful for something? Ah, so her gratitude was yeah. uh, overwhelming. I mean, there was more than <laughs> wasn't enough uh, in the room, perhaps. Okay, of course, no one can guess the exact emotions at that time of this lady of the staff, but. Uh, when I read, read the the uh, comments from this hotel in the advertisement, it said that that our, her appreciation she has expressed in the room to the guests uh, in her mind was not enough. So she still wants to uh, extend, uh, show her appreciation, even doors closed. And during this five minute, five seconds or six seconds bowing, uh, she is reflecting how she served the guest. Uh, did she uh, show her uh, appreciation and care enough to these individuals? They are busy packing their luggage, uh, ready to go on a business trip in Japan. Was her apology enough and properly done, properly done in the room, if it's a case of apology? So um, what is the takeaway for you here is to many Japanese workers, 
of all types of work and all levels, work is holy, sacred. Yeah. Uh, even if they are not aware of that, subconsciously, work is something that one is supposed to put her own mind and heart to, to do one's personal best. And to delve a little bit farther into that, my own observation is that the Japanese workers, mostly even part-timers, not just fully full full uh, full-time managers and uh, you know executives, not just people with MBAs in particular professional backgrounds, even part-timers. I mean, to to most Japanese workers, they have an internal standard of the perfection to attain of the day. So until her sense of perfection or good service reaches her standard, she voluntarily set for herself. She wants to bow, she wants to thank, she wants to apologize. So it's not because the customer or boss is around, but to do her personal best. Yeah. Now I just said, most Japanese workers or all of them I said, is, isn't that an exaggeration? <laughs> Yeah, some of you may think may, may, may think so because not all Japanese, of course, are like that, obviously. But however, however, you can safely say many Japanese workers, from my personal experiences, because it this mind of a customer service, appreciation, or apology permeates common people, not only highly educated, trained professionals. And uh, you can even say Japanese people are mostly artisans or uh, craftsmen, mm. not just in the art of art, but in any any business, any industry. So their work must be aesthetically beautiful, beautiful work of art. Right? At least that, that's the vision we like to have when we when we get to when we get to do something. So practical practically what, what does that mean for you? Um, I think you sh you should uh, learn to show your commitment, sincerity, and if you talk, walk the talk. Don't try to be bigger than you are. Don't show off talents and skills when you're only half the level of a real expert. So be true, be humble, be committed with a pure mind. Well, that's a kind of a general uh, attitude thing. But with that kind of attitude, the way you write your emails, the way you present your first uh, business proposal uh, will be uh, different. Okay, so far, uh, any questions do you have? Or any comments you want to share? Um, can I ask a question, please? Um, yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just really curious to know um, that, you know, this is so insightful, but if, if I was setting up in Japan and I had, um different teams may be coming over from the west what type of practical things would a business need to do to really educate um like their staff so that you know there was a really good understanding right at the kickoff right at the start is what sort of practical things should organizations or hr leaders be thinking about um potentially to ensure that there's like a smooth mm -hmm. understanding okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have heard or read already about this. Uh, Japan is a country where, with a long history, right, easily more than 2,500 years, without any change of our, of, of our politique. Our emperor has been around since the day of, uh, of uh, the birth of this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, uh, whoever the top leaders, prime ministers or uh, company heads, we don't care. Because each worker has diligence in in, in the spirit, mm. uh, as we, we as we see our our emperor also doing uh, work and sometimes as a ceremony as a gesture to to the people, does work in the party field in inside their uh, imperial 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 palace to show mm. the, the the beauty of the of the uh, of the diligence. But anyway, you are non Japanese. So please, please tell them that you have to come up with something that, that is not available in that market, something they can't do by themselves. <clears throat> and show them you are committed to long-term, 
not just not uh, fly by night operation of course um so you have to figure out how to be part of their uh business of long standing um, by trying to give them what is not available available in uh, available in japan right maybe that will be the first first step yeah Okay, I know, thank you. Very I know much. if I can just add a point to that rather than a question. Mm. Um, mm. I know that many of our HR leaders um, and members um, have tried to enter into the Japanese market, and um, one of the biggest challenges they have is 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 understanding how to bring the first, the very first person, usually a country manager or some mm. kind of business leader, uh, mm. into Japan, and I think they have. A very particular problem with that because that's a very hard thing to do in any country when you're expanding but mm. obviously with some of the things that you're talking about kawatani around the complexity around the culture um that makes it especially hard i think for people that haven't entered into the japanese market to really understand it um before they arrive there and and, and try and build a business there so i think it's a very I don't know if you have anything to add around that, but I think it's a very difficult challenge for you know US and European headquartered mm -hmm. businesses, um, especially when they're entering into Japan, hiring their very first person or first people into the team. Mm -hmm. Well, the first person, the head of the country, uh, ideally needs to be the type of person who, who um, um, believes in building uh, long-term relationship based on trust. Somebody who believes in building trust is the core of all the businesses there. And of course, that's, that is true with any country, but uh, somebody who is not, not trying to show a performance in the first three months back to the headquarters, but someone who likes, who likes the Japanese sales team and colleagues and try to share uh, all he can do to strengthen the Japanese operation. So yeah, just add add to that. Mm. Thank you. Let's uh, we'll, we'll be moving on to a bit more practical uh, solutions from now. Now this is one example. This is a typical mall scene in actually taken in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and one of the flagship. Uh, shops inside this mall is a Japanese company called Eon, Eon Group. It's a large merchandise like uh, Walmart in the US, perhaps. Now, in the Nikkei Shinbun, which is a Japanese economic newspaper, <clears throat> they did this whole page advertisement uh, some time ago, and it says uh, reflection or remorse of Eon. Uh, self-criticism of E.ON. Uh, what they said in essence here is we at E.ON was not able to uh, look at customers, unable to come up with the changes changes in, in the times. E.ON price was not as uh, affordable as, in, as other uh, shops. E.ON floors uh, was not a product that customers want to see. Eon failed to service improvement to our customers. We here uh, pledge that we will turn our ears more to uh, the needs of the customers and learn proactively from other more excellent companies. Once again, we will try our very best to bring back the service, the shop floor, uh, low price that the customers really need. Okay. So after they have done realize they have they have not done the job perfectly or failed in certain areas they even do this whole page ad to appeal to the whole world the community that their motivation is very sincere and they'll they're ready to take every step necessary to improve for not just for the company but for the people so this is one example of, of a pure mind be humble and be true so when you first hit japanese land Products and service will be, of course, world quality, but you have to have a pure mind as a human being. Be ready to be, quote unquote, go naked, take off your mask, and uh, try to have 
a person to person, human to human, need to need intimate conversation with customers. So don't spend all your day in the aircon room. The place or game bar, the real site, is is where the action is, where where the customers are working. So go out and try to know the people. The way to do business, the build relationships is, is will be very different. Um, next example, <clears throat> one of my favorite companies called Denso, one of one of the largest premier uh, uh, production partners of partners of Toyota Motors. I was working in Malaysia for nearly twenty years, and my friend in this company Denso complained, this spirit is very hard to get into the head of the local workers with all with all respect to Malaysian people because I have a lot of friends and stay there 20 years so I, I am just quoting what he said as an expatriate there faulty component can kill a passenger so they have to make sure everything is all right before the ship before parts components gets leaves the leaves the factory this is again again an example of what I meant as artisan or a craftsman Right? Even factory worker. Of course, they are they are making a machine that may that can kill a person if faulty is there. So discipline, perfection, benevolence, daring. Of course, I don't have to tell you all the professional professional people like you, but it's just a reminder uh, as you uh, as you enter. Now. In the battlefield, if you are samurai, for example, you are given a chance to yield your sword only once because there's no second chance. And what it means is in business is drift. Do it right the first time. This actually word is taken from uh, one of the Kaizen uh, consultants in the US. He calls it, he calls its attitude uh, to do a quality job as drift. Do it right the first time. So when you do, so it, it's a, it's the opposite of this popular concept. Uh, um, fail fast and learn fast. If you're ready, 70%, just do it first and learn from the mistakes. The faster mistakes you realize, the better chance of, of improving. Of course, that's a great attitude. And most business outside Japan is done that way, I am aware. But when it comes to Japan, try to show your first presentation, first encounter, uh, fully prepared. When you feel you've made a mistake, uh, admit it. it. Admit it, it in front of them and make a promise that you'll come back to them with a, with a better content next time. Okay, that's that's kind of a social cultural background. And moving on to practical uh, business community relationship. <clears throat> um, in the center, we have a co company, so a company must make sure to feed their employees, and uh, their cost, cost, uh, their products and service must be welcome, respected, and wanted by the customer, and uh, and uh, their business must be uh, respected and uh, shouldn't harm the environment of the community, like a river in the water, river in the water, and the sea or mountain, uh, the. In the, pro the materials they use in the factory shouldn't be hazardous to the community, so must be uh, in good uh, harmony with the community uh, around. Now, we have this traditional word, which has been around since the Edo period, you can say, and it's called three-way wins. First win is seller's win. Company must win, make profits must pay a salary uh, continuously to the employees. And as a result, buyers must be happy, customers win. And as a result, community at large uh, has a very positive, cheerful, and a safe environment. So it's called three-way wins, right? So when you bring in your products and service, um, uh, <clears throat> Try to make a good uh, preparation and research how other companies have been doing in the same industry, same products. And uh, if possible, try to gather information how uh, other companies has been doing already before you, before you, 
in, in with your with your production services. <clears throat> and um, uh, the the <clears throat> company uh, management has a moral responsibility and obligation to feed employee, even if company is not doing very well. Uh, when uh, something goes wrong, uh, often a press conference is convened to apologize like like this way, right? So their, their business is not just for the company, but for the community. And they show their apology or gratitude to the public. Okay? So customers are very particular about the little small way of doing business, whether it could be hamburger shop or auto industry. So what, is it, what does it mean to, to actual business? Uh, you show them your credibility, especially your first timer, and proves that your business has been credible for a long time in your industry. And if possible, show your personal credibility in a face-to-face -face meeting with them. Now, my question, next question is, how can we show your personal credibility, reliability to customers, the first time customers in meetings? How about Mr. Bravani? Yeah. Uh, How can well, we show personal credibility? To um, trying to be honest as much as possible. Uh, frank and honest as much as possible, right? That's good, that's good. Uh, what else? Other people? What kind I think, of- I Personally, I think showing mm -hmm. respect, the key, I mean, listening oh. to what they're saying, not just trying to say oh. the, the pitch oh. you want to get across, you know. I see. Listening to what they're trying to say. Mm. Uh -huh. right, right. And often they they uh, they speak with a lot of pause, pause in between, maybe speaking to the colleagues in the meeting um, side, side, side of discussion. <clears throat> That's right. Um, okay. Those are communication-wise, very important. Uh, let me add, uh, if you're working 20 years in your company, tell them, I've been in this company for 20 years, blah, blah, <laughs> then they will feel very safe. <laughs> and yeah, tell them you have not changed the job even once, if it is true with you. But if you did change jobs a few times, tell them, but in the same industry, <laughs> if it's possible. So, um, and if you have done some business in your country already with a Japanese firm, in Ireland, UK, Europe, and US, of course, that is a very, very special bonus. And show them uh, your business experiences in the US, in your country, or uh, this is something very different topic, but if you have done some presentation, done some work in a Japanese chamber in your community, tell them. So something that, that relates you personally to the people in front of you. Honest and humble at all times, true and try to spend equal time or more time to listen to what they're trying to say, even if, even if they're not speaking very much, try to ask questions to draw out what's in their mind and ask questions like, is there anything else that we haven't explained very well? Is there is this presentation enough to satisfy your internal, internal discussion needs? I'm sure you have a lot of information that to convince your upper management, tell us, what is lacking in my presentation, okay? Show and admit your presentation is not perfect. Always be, be true that nothing can be perfect, right? <clears throat> so this is one example of a company, customer, community must be equally happy. <clears throat> Moving on, I know you have some questions so later. Let's try to find time to, to take your questions. I'm going to show you a video clip, about two minutes, and this will show you another important dimension of Japanese business. Now, a lot of your non-Japanese people complain, especially from a busy country like Europe and, uh, <laughs> and the US. A lot of people complain Japanese are slow in decision making. And uh, this video is going to show you the opposite. How mm -hmm. group dynamics work when the matter uh, centers around impacting all people there, 
Okay, before explain, explaining, uh, let's have a look. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Beta, I will ask your comments about this. うん、多分早い。通勤時間とも重なり、街は大混乱。午前8時を過ぎたところです。博多駅周辺は騒然としています。だが、事故直後。そして採用された土。穴を埋めるにはミキサー車月曜日には別動画できる段階まで持っていくことを目標にする。わずか Okay, everyone, how's your how how's your feeling this? Why did they do this so fast? Why was this done so fast? Is it the sense of community, essentially, that you were talking about? Oh, as you know, one of the three values that you were mm, touching on. It's very, very powerful. Mm, yeah, sense of community. So this applies to your business. Give your partners an, a, 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 not just an impression, but the real, real feel, real feeling of uh, you. You want to be part of the community, and that has to be long term, oh. and wholeheartedly. Anybody else? Why was this so fast? Emma, you were well, saying something? They didn't. They oh, had yeah, no yeah. choice, really. They, yeah. All right, Mr. Kalapani. I think yes. I think it's because they had no choice. They had a job that had to get done, and um, it was negatively impacting so many people that it had to get done um, quickly. You know, uh, so it required no, no, uh -huh. no choice but to do it fast. Mm, I, I think also it's about um, just everybody coming together because mm. it impacts every one of everybody there it was mm -hmm. if they could all come together and do it quickly yes they'd need right. to restore it quickly but to do that yeah. they needed each other yeah. they couldn't do it on yeah. their own okay sure very very good i think so and another thing i picked up on the yeah. couple of things it said there was a comment about going beyond contractual binds yeah, so really the greater yeah. good being more right. important than the individual right. purpose right. and the individual gains of their companies to make things happen quicker exactly that borders on the topic we talked a little while ago three-way wins community must win the yeah. people of Fukuoka must win so the, the uh, practical uh, tips for you will be show them a compelling re compelling reason why and how your business you as an individual 
you as an individual can take a long-term responsibility to whatever, even if what, even if something big has happened. Show them that you're not going to run away from that mistakes in the future or problems, possible, possible, uh, you know, uh, negative things in the future. Uh, show them that you're credible, reliable, trustable human being to prove your continuity is there and you're ready to improve whatever happens in the future. See? So, hard, I think Mayor Tak Takashima, this person says, uh, uh, bringing a hearts heart to, to, to together uh, for the people of Fukuoka. So, we're here uh, uh, bringing our uh, passion and commitment to you for the people of your company, for the people of, uh, for, for the users of this service, something like that you can, you can, you can talk about. So that will be my, another answer to your earlier question by Ms. Emma. What kind of different partners coming in from, uh, coming into Japan, uh, they should prepare for? Mm. It's okay. so interesting. I just want to add to something. Mm. We were, I was part of something around, um, transformation and change in one of my old roles and one of the mm. big things that was a big step for the organization I was working for that in you know in the UK you know we have to we're measured on being a responsible business now which is something that when I say it's new it's just it's much more significant however I feel like when I listen to everything that you're talking about here this is something that is it's been, you know, going for a very long time. It's a natural cultural thing mm -hmm. um, that isn't where somebody's drawn out. This is what you need to do to be a responsible business. This is actually a natural part of the culture, the way people mm -hmm. think and feel, um, mm -hmm. which is very different to sort of, you know, shoehorning it in. But I think if I if I was to take what I know here, it's about that this has been a long-standing thing. It's a cultural mm. thing that's embedded in somebody's mm. like philosophy, how they how they turn mm. up, basically how you show up for work, that you are, whether it's your products or your services, that you are, you know, you are always going to be thinking about that wider community and the people. Um, and maybe it goes back to that bit about people building um, something for a plane, you know, where people, you know, it, it's a dangerous thing and taking the responsibility of just, you know, that somebody's life might be in their hands. So it's very okay, interesting. Great. That's, that's great. Great. My my American friend, she's an author and longtime business uh, uh, consultant in Japan in the in industry of uh, tourism. She told me after her 30 years experience in Japan, there are no, I'm sorry, there are no strangers in Japan. The whole uh, Team Japan kind of spirit is there, yeah? So what you're, what you're trying to do in bringing business and service to Japan is to be part of the community. So you have to show real commitment, yeah? Uh, if our emperor is, is working even in a paddy field and uh, I mean, or when when our uh, even our emperor is working every day, wake up early in the morning and prays for the peace and welfare welfare of all human beings in the world, not just for the Japanese people. That we commoners uh, emulate that attitude and try to practice the same spirit in the daily daily job we do every day. Yeah. <clears throat> what have we got uh, next? I think we are coming to the end of this like Japanese company. I think in the interest of time, okay, let's do this very fast. I'm sorry we are taking a bit more time than 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 uh, than planned. Now let's move on to the next topic of Japanese organization. This shows a um, how the organization are, are, is built in the typical organic type of Japanese organization on the left and a typical Western mechanistic type of organization. And this is uh, taken from a uh, 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 KO Business School book titled Human Dimension of International Business. Now on the different side, this is the Japanese organic type. So this is a living uh, organism, right? President, managers, and the ordinary staff, or section chief, assistant, <coughs> uh, supervisors, <coughs> and the staff. Of course, we have some joint responsibility area, which is wide open here compared to the mechanistic one. Individual responsibility is there, but it's not clearly defined like in this Lego block. 
its dotted line, meaning responsibility comes in and out, and it, it can change the shape. Uh, sometimes become larger, sometimes become smaller, but you have to be ready to be responsible or to do work for whatever comes in to your territory. Now, so that's why it's called organic and a whole organization can change the shape according to the threats, problems from outside the organization. Now, the point here is, in, okay, you, you, you see the word hold in, so in, in between the individuals, there are wide open space. This open space is the engine, the life of this organization, meaning they have this business power huddling, small talks and or behind the scenes or unofficial discussion and chit chats in toilet, in a company or a hall or canteen or after work is a kaya drinking places and so forth. And in, in that, what's taking place in the green area is uh, called hall and so uh, report, communicate, uh, re sorry, report, inform and consult. A lot of informal chit chats or reporting, keeping each other informed and going to people for consultation is going on. So, of course, you have the same activity in any any uh, company, any culture, of course, but the uh, this freedom, I mean, open space is much larger. So it's difficult to see who is taking the responsibility, who is the leader, who is, uh, how, how far they have gone to the decision making. It's difficult to see from outside because they, they are automatically, I mean, they are changing their shape. Uh, as we, um, so what you can do as a, as a foreign uh, investor exporter to Japan is, you can't influence influence their shared responsibility inside. That's too deep inside. Individual responsibility, yes, they are often under pressure, and what they do is hold in so try to convince other people, try to consult with other people. So what you can do is to influence your Japanese person in front of you and um, to help their internal discussion internal decision making easier that's why a while ago I, I mentioned to you ask them uh is there anything missing in my in my information that you might need to help uh internal discussion move faster and that is how you influence internal holding so uh internal discussion style right um, remember that an individual person in front of you in a meeting is carrying not only his or her responsibility, but also uh, he or she is obliged to share that information company-wide. So, so she has needs a lot of uh, uh, the, the holistic information around surrounding your product and service. And uh, of course, it's difficult to see what's really uh, necessary for that person to bring to the organization back to the organization. So you ask constantly, is there anything else uh, you want me to take back to my company and uh, give you better information? Uh, if there's any other way we can be of help to you, we uh, uh, please let me know. Something like that. <clears throat> so remember, Japanese organization is organically made. Uh, made and uh, they are, uh, they are uh, <clears throat> how you can influence that internal decision making is to make the person in front of you comfortable and feed them of uh, information that uh, she needs inside the organization afterward. Make this part easier. <clears throat> okay, so far, is there any questions here about organization? Well, you can even go back to a little bit to this, uh, uh, this one already done, huh? Organization. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'd, I'd just like to make a point, actually, just knowing, yes. um, coming back to kind of relating to my point earlier in mm -hmm. the, I know a, a number of the, uh, our members and HR leaders watching this, and there's, there's two main things that I think that they can apply a lot of these learnings to. One mm -hmm. was one that I touched on, which was relating to how to expand into Japan and number I mean honestly there's so many things here that I know from experience haven't been considered so there'll be a lot of learnings um for the people that are entering Japan for the first time because people simply don't know 
a lot of the oh. things that, that you've talked about, Mr. Kawatani. But I think mm -hmm. the other component which you kind of touched on that maybe on another session might be quite interesting is how to influence um, mm -hmm. from a customer point of view in Japan. So if you were, for example, a salesperson or if you were someone who needed to influence an end customer within Japan, how to give you know, your people, the tools to to be able to influence um, by, you know, making the person in front of you comfortable and understanding how the organizations work to help influence decisions, especially as an international organization. I think that could be very, very powerful and probably mm -hmm. worthy of a session in its own right. So, um, so no, really from my side, it was more just a couple of points that I think might really yeah, resonate yeah, with people. Yeah, sure. Yeah, those, those actual practical how-tos uh i think it needs another session uh, of its own so within a half an hour we'll try to touch on the philosoph and social cultural organization background makeup and then and then if interested more people interested interested in the concrete steps then we, we can we can do that thank you okay let's wrap up today's session with a very short kind of a summary list of the principles of what japanese way will work <clears throat> Deliver every promise you make, if you ever make a promise. If you say, no problem, it must be no problem. All right? Do the right thing, even if no one is watching. <laughs> That's why I think no need to tell you, <laughs> those professional people, but do the right thing, even when no one is watching. Meaning, if you feel something is, uh, 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 there's uh, something amiss, something is not complete, don't try to hide it with too beautiful presentation, too beautiful talking. Yeah. Be humble and admit it. I, I, you can say something like, this is the best possible scenario we can think of, and that's why we brought it to you. However, honestly speaking, to appeal to this particular group of uh, segment of the market, we feel that something needs a bit, we need a bit, we need a bit, uh, a, a bit of a something more. And that missing puzzle we haven't come up with yet. Would you mind, uh, you know, showing your insights into that little piece we feel missing? See, do the right thing, even if no one is watching. <clears throat> Thirdly, <clears throat> do it right the first time. Drift, make a presentation, uh, preparation. Do uh, well done, well done, and bother your colleagues and seniors. Is is like my my uh, example I've just cited just now. <clears throat> Ask your uh, senior staff, ask your customers where you can improve, right? Um, and because you are foreigners, okay, let me tell you a short story. When I was working in uh, Malaysia, set up my company, I asked a local uh, celebrity uh, management guru to be the head of my company. And I've been shy uh, to approach him for questions because he's uh, such a busy person. So, but one day he called me, hey, Kawatani. You are a foreigner. Foreigners are expected to make mistakes. You should bother me more. <laughs> Isn't he a very open-minded boss? I've never met such a such such a broad-minded person. So it's okay when you're in doubt. It's okay to trouble your uh, even customers or business partners with the right questions with the right attitude. Fifth, one sorry is better than ten ex excuses, and be sincere. Okay, with that, uh, my presentation is uh, like that. And if you have any questions to wrap up, I'm, I'm ready to take it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time today so far. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Kawatani, for everything that you've gone through with us today. Um, one of the biggest themes today was about community. And, you know, we're a community ourselves. And our community um, is committed to basically give as much as we can to HR leaders across the board to support them and their companies in their growth plans as individuals, you know, and, and to help their organizations. You may be wondering how we fund our community. Uh, we have specialization in recruiting across 66 countries, including Japan. So if you have a need uh, for recruitment support and help, all we ask is that you reach out to us and um, we'll see if uh, we're in a position to help you um, deliver a high quality recruitment service. And that's really what powers and funds the uh, the community that we offer for all of our HR leaders and members. So I just wanted to mention that. 
uh, we also have a Slack channel and WhatsApp group available to all HR leaders. If you're interested in this, um, the recruitment solution, or indeed anything else we can help you with, we're also interested in things such as any other topic suggestions that might help you in your day-to-day -day roles, please email my colleague Emma uh, at emma.pite at hrconnectglobal.com. So thank you all very much for attending today and we will look forward to seeing you all on the next event. <laughs>